North Elliott Church. Good morning, North Elliott Church. There I am. So excited to be in the house, oh Lord. Can we give God a big hand clap of praise in this place? Hallelujah for waking us up this morning. Here at North Elliott, we like to say it like this, that we exist to help you and your family. I think this is important, family. Today is Mother's Day, and it's so much about the family and, and the, the, what God has brought, given us on this earth as in our, in our moms to be able to be a, such a blessing to us in every way. So we exist to help you and your family experience God, find community, and fulfill purpose. And if this is your first time here, we like to say it like this as well, that we kind of believe that community, that word community can be really described and summed up in two words, is that you belong. So if this is your first time here, we believe that you belong. It doesn't matter where you've come from or what you've done or, or really uh, if you're in Pryor or Mays County or if you've traveled in, we believe that you belong. Can we give all of our first timers a real big hand? Let's celebrate them today. And speaking of celebrations, again, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. If you don't mind, can we stand on our feet and just celebrate our moms real quick? Come on, let's give our moms a real big hand clap. Thank our moms. Thank you so much, moms, for being amazing. We love you. We appreciate you. Now, listen, if, if, you know, if you were anything like me as a teenager, you really need to be thanking on your mom today, all right? My mom, I, put, I know I put my parents through it, and um, I am thankful that my mom never gave up on me. She continued to pray for me, and today I stand here on the prayers of my mom. And I've, I've been told many of times by youth pastors that have kind of come through in, in my life on uh, how at times because my, I was so crazy as a teenager and rebellious and running from God as hard and as fast as I could. I wanted nothing to do with God and nothing to do with the church. And I would have youth pastors that would come to me and be like, your parents, they're in my office crying because of you and they're praying for you and, and you're going to turn your life around. And be like, nah, I ain't, ain't going to turn around. No, I'm not. But today I know that my life has been turned around and that by the good grace of God and by the great prayers of my mom. And so to all of the moms, thank you so much. We really do appreciate you. Now, if you're here today and maybe you're grieving the loss of a mom, and we just want to let you know from our church to you, from us to you, from a staff to you, we love you. We're praying for you. We know that sometimes Mother's Day can feel different from others. Some it's a celebration. To others, it's a time of grieving and it's, and it's tears. And uh, because we miss our moms. And we just want to let you know we love you. We're praying for you. If there's any way that we can help and to sit with you, we were willing to do that. Uh, to be able to help you through any grieving process that you may experience on this day. But regardless of kind of how you feel, we believe that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice. And we're going to be glad in it. And I don't know about you, but I am thankful. Regardless of how, what kind of feelings I may be experiencing on this day. I am thankful that I can come into the house of the Lord and I can be able to worship my Savior with friends and family. I am so thankful for this church. And I believe today is going to be an amazing and an encouraging day full of hope and joy for you. At this time, we're going to take up our offering and give you an opportunity to be able to worship in your giving as the ushers come and prepare themselves to be able to uh, receive the tithes and offerings. Uh, we want to say, church, thank you so much for your generosity. One of our values within this church, kind of the way that we uphold our vision is we have values, things that we hold close and dear to us as a church. And one of those values is generosity. And so we want to say thank you for your generous giving. Thank you for being so faithful and loyal in your giving. And we just encourage you on this Mother's Day to continue to do that because your giving may help. Maybe there's a single mom in this community that is going to need some hope and joy and encouragement. And today your giving can be a part of helping single moms out, blessing this community because this church isn't just about this building, right? Church is about the community and your giving encourages us and allows us to be able to be a blessing to our community. So continue to give faithfully today. Let's pray over our offering and pray over this service today. Father, we thank you so much, uh, man, for our moms. Thank you for the blessing that you've given us in each and every one of our moms. Thank you so much. We, we worship you for that. And Father, as we give today, we declare a blessing over this offering. Let it expand. Let it multiply. And that it would do what you've called and send it to do. 
And Father, that this would not just be about ourselves, but Father, this opportunity to give is now extending this church to be a blessing to this community. Father, we pray over this service. We declare there's a fresh anointing stirring and moving in this place, that broken marriages are being restored. Those who have come in and they're in hopeless situations are finding hope in Jesus. Father, we pray over our pastor as he brings a word today. I pray that he would preach with fresh revelation, with conviction, boldness, and strength. Father, thank you for your presence. It's breaking chains today. It's lifting heads today. We give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, church, if you don't mind as you're giving, let's stand on our feet and let's get ready to worship God today.
you're still enough keep me within your love and my heart will sing your praise again your promise still stands great is your faith
children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generation and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you with you in the morning, in the evening, and you're coming, and you're going, and you're weeping, and rejoicing. He is for you, 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 he is for you. 
we sing amen 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 happy mothers day i just want to pray over you what a beautiful song for mothers day right mothers you are blessed this morning Father, I just pray that you would bless each mother. Lord, I realize there are those who are celebrating this weekend with their mothers. And I also realize there's those who are hoping one day to be a mother. It's been a struggle. And I just pray you give them hope today and bless them. And for those whose mothers have gone on to be with you, and today they're remembering you. I just pray you comfort that mother today, those children. And Father, for those of us who are at a distance from our mothers, Lord, I just pray, God, that the time is taken to let their mothers know that they are thought of and they are loved. Father, I know the purpose is to pass on, Lord, the truth of who Jesus is from one generation to the other. And Lord, I pray you help us as mothers to continue that. Lord, in this day and age when things, Lord, seem turned upside down, we will press on in the truth of who you are. And we will pass that on to our children and our grandchildren, to their generation, the next generation. Father, I just bless you today and thank you that you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. I want to say happy Mother's Day. Moms, you matter. You make a difference. And mother was God's idea from the beginning. Mothers are original, right? God knew we would need moms. Can you imagine a world without mothers? How chaotic that would be? <laughs> mothers keep a lot of things functioning, right? and moving and they get a lot accomplished sometimes in a short amount of time and moms you mean the world to us and I'm, I'm so thankful and blessed to have a godly mother and I'm thankful that my daughters are good mothers and I know many of you feel that way about your families as well but moms I just wanted to give you this quote from Sharon Janes it says successful mothers are not the ones who have never struggled they are the ones who never give up despite the struggles. Amen. Proverbs 31, 25 says, strength and dignity are her clothing. You don't have to be a perfect mom to make a difference. Your presence and the things you do are making a difference. And we here at North Elliott Church just want you to know we love you mothers. And we thank the world of you, mothers. And today, before you leave, we ask that you stop. We have a photo wall out there and get a picture. Um, if your kids are with you or you're here with your mother, be sure to get a picture um, with her today. That's our gift to you. And we also have a little gift you can take home with you. But I pray that your day is blessed. Amen. Good job. You look pretty today, too. Amen. Hallelujah. Celebrate, Mom. Amen. Got to try to fix stuff here for a second. I don't, I don't fix it too much. You might need this, Pastor David, so I'm going to leave it here when it comes time for, for the altar. I want to talk to you today about beholding your mother. And I want to do two things before I, I get started on that. The first thing I want to do is I want to celebrate some of our girls uh, who have made it to state with track and for our girls soccer team here in Pryor that has advanced to the next round. Can we just give these ladies, amen, we're proud of you, we're praying for you, and uh, we believe, just go bring home the gold even when other people don't believe, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Go slay Goliath or Goliath or whatever at, at uh, whatever, whatever Goliath's sister was. I'm sure she was tall and ugly. <laughs> Amen. Nothing like our girls who are beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. I won't say short because most of them are taller than me. So, uh, amen. Hallelujah. That's just another sermon for another day. But, uh, but I'm glad that, that you guys are here. And I want you to go to an unfamiliar 
Mother's Day passage in John chapter 19. John 19, 25 through 27. And I want to set this up for you. Right before Jesus speaks these words to his mother Mary and his disciple John, just off to the side of his vision, the guards, the Roman soldiers, are gambling for his garments. And as soon as he utters these words, he will breathe his last breath by crying out to God that it is finished. So while the world was gambling over who he is and his stuff, Jesus was thinking about his mother. The last act he did before he went to heaven was to assure that his mother was taken care of. Not, hey, I don't have an inheritance. They're over there selling it. I don't have anything to give you. So wedged between the gambling and his death are these words. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister. This is Salome. Salome is the mother of James and John. No wonder Jesus knew these guys so well and would call them the sons of thunder. They were his cousins. Also standing there was his aunt, Mary, the wife of Cloopas. This is believed to be Mary's sister. So he's got his mom, he's got his aunts, and then there is Mary Magdalene. So at the feet of Jesus, at his cross, there are the women who have supported him all of his life and one of his close followers, the woman in whom he would appear to first after his resurrection and the disciple whom he loved, John. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. Father, we just pray you add your blessing upon the reading of your word, and we pray you put your anointing upon the preaching of your word that the women in this church and the women who are watching online may be honored and edified by your words, Jesus. I pray in your name, amen. The first thing I want to deal with this morning is the word behold. The word behold means to see. It means to consider. It means to observe. And so today I'm asking every one of us, because every one of us are children of a mother. <laughs> right? Not everyone in here is a mother, but we are all children of mothers. And since today is our day to honor them, I'm going to ask you to see your mother. To see her maybe differently than you have seen her before. To consider all that your mother went through to bring you into this world and to bring you to the point you are today, whether she is still alive with you or she has passed. I want you to observe all the things that your mother did, and I even want you to observe the things your mother didn't do. Today, I want you to behold your mother. I want you to see her. But also to the moms, I want to ask you to do the very same. I want you to behold your children. I want you to see them, to consider them, to observe them, to see who they are, to see who they are now, to see what they do, to see them, to consider how you might be a blessing to them now, to observe that 
person that they have become. You see, moms are faithful. Moms are fearless. Some of you had a mother like that, and some of you didn't. You can flip that back. I'm not to that point yet. Some of you had a mother like that, and some of you didn't. So I'm asking you to behold her, whether she was faithful and fearless or whether she was absent and abandoned you. I'm asking you to see her. And to the moms, I'm asking you to see your child. If your child has been faithful, respectful, honorable, or if they haven't been, I'm asking you to see them. Because I guarantee at the foot of Calvary, Mary and her, and her sisters were seeing him. For everything that he was and everything that he shall be. And Jesus was seeing them. Can you imagine the agony of the cross how terrible it was, and then add insult to injury that your mom has to watch you die? Can you imagine what was going through Christ's mind? Not just the people of the world, not just the honoring of of his father, not just the fulfilling of the will of God for this reason and purpose have I come, not just because he said that he would lay down his life and for the glory that was set before him he would endure even the cross, but can you imagine seeing his, his mother? He saw her. He saw all the years she had given to him, and he saw all the years that she would yet live without him. He saw her. I'm asking you to see today, to see them for who they are, not who you've idealized them to be, not for who you wanted them to be, but who they are. See them. See your children. See your mother. See them. I feel like I'm doing a... Cosentix commercial. They use that phrase a lot. See me. I want you to see them. I want you to observe them. I want you to understand that if you had a mom that was like Mary, you were blessed. But whether you had a mom like that or not, you are still blessed. And mom, whether your child has been honorable, you are blessed. And whether your child hasn't been honorable, you are blessed. I'm asking everyone today, wherever you stand, whatever position you stand in, some of you ladies, you are both a a, a daughter and a mother. I'm asking you to see both directions. And I'm asking children to see moms. And I'm asking moms to see their children. I'm asking you to see the generations. But to do that, we got to go somewhere. So Jesus looks down from the cross and he says to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Now, I did a lot of reading about this and I've done a little research about this woman, behold your son part. And theologians seem to go out of their way. You can flip that screen now. Theologians go out of their way. To try to explain that Jesus wasn't disrespecting his mother by calling her woman. And they go out of their way to to explain why theologically she was woman because he is God and all these kind of things. And I want to just say something to you. Some of that's just baloney. I want to give you Ken Angel's commentary. I believe when he looked at his mother and said, Woman, behold your son. I think he was trying to say something to all women. That the guy standing next to you, this young John, even though his mom is standing beside you as well, he needs a mother. I want you to become his mother. So here it is, all of you women, whether you have children or not, I want you to see someone this week as your son or daughter. 
that isn't your biological child. See someone who needs a mother. I know he had a mother. I get it. But I'm so thankful that my mom, as a kid, saw my friends as her sons. And I'm so thankful that my best friends in all the world that were brothers, that their mom, I call her my Ohio mom. I'll send her a message today. My Ohio mom. I'm so glad that that my Ohio mom saw me just like she saw her sons when the three of us were together. There was no difference in me than them. And when my friends were at my house, there was no difference. My mom treated my friends like they were her sons. So much so, she'd whip you if you needed it. I don't know if Larry Smith will watch this, but I remember when Larry, Larry Smith was about 15, and he said something not, not too inappropriate, but somewhat inappropriate in my mom's presence. And my mom said, Larry Smith, I will wash your mouth out with soap right now. She loved him enough to correct him. See, Jesus was saying something when he was saying something. He was saying to his mother, I want you now to see this child as your son. And as you have loved me, I want you to love him. As you have encouraged me, I want you to encourage him. As you've stood by my side, I want you to stand by his side. Side, As you have been faithful to support me and faithful to pray for me and faithful to follow me in my journeys and my ministry, I want you to do the same for John. As you have stood up for me and protected me and watched over me and even provided for me, I want you to do the same for John. So I'm saying today, yes, we celebrate mothers, but I'm telling all of the women in here, you have the opportunity today and this week and the rest of your life to be someone's mother, someone that didn't have a mother, somebody that's in need of a mother, that right now today you can become a mother. Because we celebrate moms here. We celebrate all types of moms here today, adopted moms, foster moms. I mean, whether there's a, a, an official certificate, just kind of like I was saying about, about my mom. You know, there wasn't official certificates of adoption, but my mom became a mom. So if you're a stepmom, or if you're a, a biological mom, or a foster mom, or adopted mom, or a surrogate mom, or someone looks to you as a mom, behold that child. The next thing that I want you to see is that Jesus says to the disciple then, the one whom he loved, behold your mother. I want you to see her. See her in her beauty. See her in her flaws. See her in her faithfulness. See her in her fears. See her in her joy. See her in her tears. See her right now, but also see to her later. Take care of her today, but also take care of her later. While she is alive, I'm expecting you to care for her, to provide for her, to protect her, to watch out for her. Because I don't know what my brothers are going to do. Because Jesus had brothers. He had a sister. The Bible tells us that. That Joseph and Mary had more than one kid, Jesus. I don't know what they're going to do because at this point, none of them are believers. But John, I know what you're going to do. I know where you're going to go. I know how long you're going to live. You see, it's believed that uh, by by, this, I'll take from the commentators. I don't say all the stuff commentators. I I, I do. I do read it. I do. I do take it to heart. But it's believed that Mary lived to be about 59 years of age. But John outlived all the disciples. He even outlived some of his brothers who became his disciples. So Jesus knew that John from that moment would take her 
into his own house and care for her. So now I want to speak to all of the children. Because that's all of us are children. But especially to those of us that are younger children. Maybe you're like me. Maybe your mom is, has gone. And, and I know I mentioned my Ohio mom, but I've got, I've got Twyla's mom. But there are others in, in here, some of you ladies in the church. You're like moms to me. You're like mothers to me. But I'm asking everyone to, to, to behold your mother. I want you to see, first of all, your biological mother. I want you to see her. I want you to see her for who she is and who she was and maybe even what she wasn't. But I also want you to see the opportunity of other ladies in your life that you beholding them and blessing them. But as I was studying for this, God just really kept pushing on me the estranged relationships that take place in life. How Moms get disconnected from their kids, and kids get disconnected from their moms. Maybe your mom wasn't the ideal mother. Maybe she didn't have an example to be. Maybe she never had anyone to care for her and never had anyone to, to kind of show her the way or teach her how to be a good mom. Maybe she didn't have that. Maybe she's not been that. Maybe she's not been there for you. Maybe you've, you've struggled through life because your mom has been absent. But today I'm asking you to see her. And I'm asking you to do what Jesus asked John to do. Make room for her in your life. Regardless of who your mom is or isn't, make room for your mom in your life today. As you go forward, as you move into the future, make room for your mom because most of us, our parents will pass before we. Some of you have had to suffer that great loss of seeing your children pass before you did. And I'm sorry that you had to face that. I'm sorry that like Mother Mary, you were there with them when they started this world. And you were there with them when they ended this world. And you never thought that would happen. And I, I just want to stop right here and say, I, 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 I feel for you. And I pray for you. And I'm asking God to help you and strengthen you. But for those estranged relationships, this is the day, this is the year for those things to be made right. This is the year that we can behold the widows as mothers. This is the year that we can behold the childless as mothers. This is the year that we can behold uh, spiritual mothers or, or mothers in the church. That we can see these women for their value. And we can make room for them in our life. I'm going to ask the praise team to get positioned as I bring this airplane in for a landing. And we're going to sing the blessing a little bit more. But I want you to hear what I'm about to say. You choose today. Today, you choose. I'm going to, I'm going to go through four different things. Two for children, two for moms. But listen to me. You can choose to see your mother differently. To see her, to love her, to take care of her, to, to make room for her in your life. I say to you children whose mothers weren't all that you needed them to be, or whose moms aren't serving the Lord, you can choose to see them differently, and you can love them with the love that Christ has loved you with. You choose. Now I say to the moms... You can choose, right, to be the kind of mother that you've always wanted to be. You can choose to see your children, even if your children aren't serving the Lord. You can choose to see them differently. And you can choose today to love them with the love that Christ has loved you with. You see, I'm asking us to choose love today. I'm asking us to choose love. I'm asking children to behold their mothers and love them. And I'm asking mothers to behold their children and to love them as Christ did from the cross.
Father, I just thank you for this word. I thank you for this message. I thank you for mothers, and I thank you for their place that they have in our life. And now I pray blessing over them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're going to sing this song as a way to bless you. I want everybody just to stand to their feet. And let's worship the Lord. Receive this blessing today, moms. Receive this blessing today. You are highly favored of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.